Cross that river and kill the remaining enemy. When crossing a bridge in battle, it is best for units to cross as fast as they can. Troops can. started a full-scale attack. Hurry! will button for the first time. This toggles fire at will on and off for the selected troops. Toggle fire at will off if you wish to preserve ammunition. Oh, oh, Rome will be amazed at such a victory. The day is ours! you've learned the basics of the battlefield, I'm going to show you how to play on the campaign map. Battles last just a day, but building an empire takes time. On the campaign map, time is divided into turns, each lasting six months. If you look at your army, you will see that the Senate has rewarded you with some military units. These will go some way to helping you expand your power. You have also received a special payment to help pay for the campaign you have just fought. 
The controls on the campaign map are similar to the battlefield. Left click selects things and right click. Double clicking on most things opens up a scroll with more details. The first time you see any scroll, I'll tell you what it's all about. But if you forget, you can always click on the question mark in the top right of a scroll. Don't do this now as I have some more important things to tell you. It's time. General! You have selected your army. You'll notice that as soon as you do this, the panel at the bottom of the screen fills with unit cards. Your general, Gaius Julius, gets a card of his own for him and his bodyguard. Use right click to move all your units to the edge of the green movement area. Try moving where the arrow is pointing. The edge of the green area is the furthest point you can move to from your current position in one turn. Selecting an area beyond this will require more than one turn of movement. March! Remember, when moving your armies around the map, it is best to do so in force. Moving your forces around in very small armies or as individual units leaves them very vulnerable to attack. Keep your units grouped together. The panel at the bottom of the screen gives details on whatever you have selected and has buttons that bring up a variety of scrolls. You may also have noticed that when you hold the mouse pointer over things, a handy tooltip pops up telling you what it is. You can look at these later by yourself in more detail, but for now, I'll explain what each button does. This is your... This displays your currently selected character or settlement. From here, you can cycle through all your characters, armies and settlements with the arrows to the side. Open an information scroll for a selected character or settlement by double left-clicking on the related item on the campaign map. Imperator. Controlling a faction requires more than just a strong sword arm and a treasury full of cash. From here, you can examine the state of your faction, keep track of your heirs, and make policy decisions. If you open this scroll, you can use the tabs you will see at the top to examine information about the Senate, diplomacy, your financial status, and other faction information. This shows the current season and lets you know if you are going to be fighting in summer or winter. This is important when you are fighting in the frozen north or in the arid deserts where bad weather can win or lose a battle. This is the end turn button. When you decide you have completed all your actions for a turn, you can click on this to advance the game. You have already moved your army, so now would be a good time to end the turn. It is now a new campaign turn. You will see that the money in your treasury is going down. In fact, you are borrowing from moneylenders. This is because you are paying wages to your army but have no income. You will need to capture a settlement to give you an income. Money is essential to build settlements or troops. The circle button on the control panel is where you can see a summary of your empire's income and expenditure for the turn. At the moment, you have no empire, so there's not much to see there, other than the ongoing expense of maintaining your army. From time to time, you will see a small picture slide down the left side of your screen. 
These are messages detailing important events that have occurred. It is important to read them as and when they appear. You can left-click on a message to open it. Right-click will dismiss it. You might notice a button in the bottom left corner of these scrolls. This will focus your view on the subject of the message. The Senate mission to capture Taquinii gives you a chance to earn a reward from the Senate and to gain a settlement which will give you an income. It's the first step towards building an empire and should solve your money problem. To attack or siege a settlement, left-click on the army you want to attack with and then right-click on the target settlement. Depending on how far you are from Taquinii, it may take you more than one turn to get there. If you can't get there in one turn, hit end turn after you have moved and repeat until you have reached your target. Right-click to move your army to any part of the highlighted area. Attack by right-clicking on a rival's army or settlement. Merge with a friendly army by moving to the same spot. Embark on a fleet at a coast by moving onto it. Attack! Besieging settlement, sir! to fear. This many men know about me. But I do know that fear can rob a man of his dignity and his honor. At this moment in the enemy ranks, fear is doing its work. Soon we will do ours. Do not fear these over nice Greeks. They have come to fight, it is true, but they will only stay to die. I command this army with pride. Three quarters of all our warriors await my orders, and I have faith in every one of you. I know that together, we will win this fight. They think their walls are enough to stop us. They should think again. We are even matched in numbers, man for man, but that does not tell the whole story. All that said, we are the stronger. Every one of you is better than they. Remember this and take heart from the memory. Those fools have never fought against me before. I hope to give them a nasty surprise. When I set my heart on an attack, I do so knowing that I will win, that my men will win, that victory is within reach. All we need to do is stretch out and grasp the foe firmly by the throat. Bloody business! Remember, the goal here is to capture the settlement, not destroy it. Buildings destroyed on the battlefield will also be destroyed on the campaign map. To capture the settlement, either kill or rout the entire enemy army, or reach the central plaza and hold it.
Brinker Base! Brinker Base! <laughs> set alight artillery ammunition to rain fire and death down upon the enemy. Flaming ammunition has reduced accuracy but is more devastating when it lands and has a greater effect on morale. Left click the show me how button to see how to do this. Press the special unit abilities button for the first time. This turns on any special formations or abilities of the unit you have selected. As you select different units, you'll see the button change. Not all units have a special ability, and the button is greyed out for them. for the first time. This toggles guard mode on and off for the selected troops. In guard mode, the unit will fight defensively, try to maintain their formation when attacked, and won't chase the enemy if they run away. A well-placed rock can kill a lot of enemy troops but it's hard to hit anything smaller than a settlement wall with these machines. Target dense concentrations of enemy units so that you hit something even if it wasn't what you aimed at.
best way to clear away enemy missile infantry is a direct cavalry charge. However, be wary of them retreating to difficult terrain for your cavalry to manage, or to where there are friendly units that could threaten you. have captured the walls! It is possible to set allied arrows to rain fire and death down upon the enemy. Flaming arrows have reduced accuracy but are more devastating when they land and have a greater effect on morale. Left click the show me how button to see how to do this. If you must, keep your troops in loose formation, stationary and facing the fire. Left click on show me how to see how to change formation. your missile fire on a small section of the enemy army. It will create a weak spot you can hit with your best troops. The enemy route will start there.
Once your men are in combat, you can make them break off just by right-clicking on a point behind them. Make sure you click well back though, or the unit will stop too close to the enemy. This can be a useful trick if your men are faster than the enemies, otherwise it will likely be a disaster. However, there will always be a few men who ignore the order, so a few losses are inevitable. useful for engaging and holding the enemy in place while you go round their side or rear. But the lower the troop quality, the less time you have before they break and rout. cavalry, make sure they are stationary. That way, they can brace themselves against the impact and will take fewer losses. is running away. The enemy general is slain, and now his men fear us. It is time to press the attack.
your unit is under attack from an enemy missile unit, you are currently using close formation. It is more difficult to hit a loosely spaced formation than a tightly packed one. Change to a loose formation by left clicking on the button to the right of the review panel. Left click the show me how button to see how to change formation. therefore only worth doing if you can drive them off the map or against some impassable terrain. The best way to deal with them is to shoot back at them with your own missile troops. Keep your other infantry stationary so they can hide behind their shields. formation button for the first time.
is a heroic victory worthy of Roman arms! During a siege, it is a good idea to build siege equipment to breach the enemy walls. You will have a number of build points available for siege equipment depending on the actions of your army. You will not be able to assault a settlement until you have at least one siege weapon. Once you are ready to assault the settlement, use the assault button. Now would be a good time to learn how to control the development of your settlements. By selecting and constructing the correct buildings, you can attract more people to tax, create a bigger pool of recruits, and gain access to better units. Left-click on the construction button to begin building improvements in this settlement. To keep this settlement safe and to support your troops, you need to improve Taquinii's public order rating and your income. To do this, you must 1. Build a shrine to Jupiter to help keep the population happy. 2. Build better roads to increase trade and troop movement speeds. 3. Build at least 4 units of town watch to act as garrison. Although you will need to spend a few turns clicking the end turn button to achieve this, don't worry. You can spend this time exploring the scrolls and buttons on your control panel. There will be more action soon. Manual recruitment can only take place when a governor is present in a settlement. If there is no permanent governor in place, you may wish to queue up units for training. Left-click on a unit to add it to the recruitment queue and again to remove it. You can change the order of training by left-clicking and dragging unit icons in the queue. You will not be able to train any units if there are too few men in the settlement to recruit. This is the button you click for recruiting armies. No faction can survive without armies, and this is where you build them. You need to have the money and a population to recruit from, of course. This button becomes the mercenary hire button when you have an army outside of a settlement. Mercenaries are expensive, but can be useful in emergencies when troops are needed immediately. You have constructed a shrine to Jupiter. This will help increase Taquinii's loyalty to Rome. Make sure you upgrade your barracks in order to allow recruitment of units. This will allow you to move existing troops out of Taquinii and onto more important duties. Manual construction can only take place when a governor is present in the settlement. If there is no permanent governor in place, you may wish to queue up buildings for construction. Left click on a building's picture to add it to the construction queue and again to remove it. You can move buildings in the queue to change construction order by dragging and dropping within the queue. Right-click on a building's picture to view its description.
This scroll lets you view important information about your faction, including your progress through the game and battle statistics. In addition, you can globally automate construction, recruitment and taxation. There is also a slider that is used to decide what proportion of your treasury the AI will spend when following an auto-management policy. Use the tabs at the top to view information on your faction's diplomatic standing in relation... Review the state of your faction's finances here. You can increase your income by adjusting the tax rate in a settlement, opening up trade routes or exploiting natural resources. Your cash reserve is also permanently displayed to the left of the end turn button on the review panel. Click on my portrait in the scroll to ask for advice on what to build next in this settlement. At this time, it would be a sound strategy to build a governor's palace in this settlement. This is a prerequisite for advanced developments. You have now built a road. Roads are very useful for getting troops from A to B quickly, and also for increasing trade between cities. The better your roads, the more trade you will generate from the surrounding area. Left click on my portrait in the scroll to ask for advice on what unit to recruit next from this settlement. It would be a sound strategy to train a unit of Hastati at this time. Hastati are the first line of attack in a legion and the youngest soldiers.
Once a character or army is moving towards their target, you can double their speed with an additional left or right click on the target. Use backspace to stop the movement of your character. The Senate are impressed with your progress. You must now take the Samnite city of Bovianum in the southeast. The Samnites have insulted the authority and dignity of Rome by supporting the Etruscan tyrant of Tarquinii in his resistance to Rome. They seem to prefer the company of Gauls and Greeks to the honest and upright people of Rome. To move your units out of a city, left-click on the city. Then left-click on the unit or agent in the review panel you wish to move out of the city. Hold down the control key when selecting more than one unit to be moved. Once you have selected all the required units, right-click on a destination outside the city. Imperator! You now have all the basics you need to manage a successful faction. Your only limits are your own ability and the whims of fate. You may wish to continue this campaign and steer your faction to dominance in Italy. You will still receive advice from time to time. Or you may want to move on to the Imperial campaign. As ever, the choice is yours. Roma Invicta. Imperator! You can obtain better quality weapons and armor for your men by constructing a blacksmith, armorer, or foundry in this settlement. Once complete, these buildings provide superior equipment for all new units trained here. This is the settlement scroll, the nerve center.
Imperator! Imperator? Sir! Daryl! 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 Sir! Sir! Imperator! Imperator! Use the space bar to speed up movement of all characters or armies on the campaign map. Press the space bar again to slow them down again. Onward! Onward! Out of move, sir! Imperator! Forward! Forward! Out of move, sir! It is important that you move swiftly to repel enemy armies when they invade your territory. If left standing in a region, an army will automatically inflict damage to the surrounding countryside, destroying roads, farms, mines, ports and natural resources. This will in turn affect trade income and population growth to your settlements. No 
friend to fear. This many men know. It's always a good idea to keep a portion of your army in reserve. They can reinforce points where you are threatened and take advantage of enemy weak points. Cavalry are usually the best reserves as they can react most quickly. Your general's bodyguard makes a powerful reserve. Quality infantry with armor and shields make great targets for enemy archers to waste their missiles on. They can protect high value units by drawing fire. readying an attack on the flanks of these already engaged. There is often an advantage in ordering your infantry to countercharge an attacking formation. The trick is to leave it until the last moment so your own lines are not broken. The gods have filled the heart of the enemy general with fear. Now he flees the field like a coward.
been under attack! is in difficulty. Send help or withdraw him from... General with fear. Now he flees the field like a the great gods be praised. The enemy general is killed. Fear makes a home in our enemies' hearts. The 
enemy show their true virtue. They are not soldiers, only frightened rabbits running from our men. amazed at such a victory. The day is ours! Victory! Moves depleted, sir. This scroll shows you the known details of an allied, neutral, or enemy character, his skills, retainers, character traits, and job. If he is a general or admiral, any intelligence on the composition of his army or fleet is displayed here. This scroll shows you the known details of an allied, neutral, or enemy character, his skills, retainers, character traits, and job. If he is a general or admiral, any intelligence on the composition of his army or fleet is displayed here. General! Forward! <laughs> 